What is up homies, my name is Felix and I am here back again with another video for you all today. So this video is going to be a little bit different, it's going to be like a little bit of a review and then also a little bit of a tutorial as well. Also I know I do look a little bit like some sort of maniac or some sort of karate kid or something with this on, but it's solely for the purpose of keeping this out of my eyes a little bit uh, as much as possible. Anyways, I hope everybody had a happy holidays and everything, happy new year, it's 2021 now, let me know if you guys are actually looking forward to 2021. 21, or you think it might be you know just as atrocious as this last year but either way I guess we're gonna see so as I said today I'm gonna be giving you guys a little bit of a review and a tutorial on the Donner DED 200 electronic drum kit which is a super cool product that they actually sent me to make a video on so this is like a little bit of a collaboration video so shout out to Donner for that and the link for the drum kit will be down in the description below along with they have a Facebook group if you want to check that out so yeah go check that out along with my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description along with my playlist of songs I've produced, my beats from my Discord, all that stuff you guys already know. If you want to go check it out, you can. And now we can get started with this video. So basically, for anybody who's kind of confused here, the main premise of the video is that I'm going to be showing you guys how to use an electronic drum kit inside of FL Studio because I haven't really seen any good videos on this on the, you know, interwebs and the YouTubes. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys how to use your electronic drum kit, whichever one you might have, but the one that I'm using is the Donner one. So yeah, I'm going to kind of give a tutorial and stuff on that, but I'm going to show you guys that after after I give my little review of the drum kit. So you can see it kind of behind me here. You can see some of the symbols and stuff. All right, what's up everybody? It's me from the future at the moment. This is basically editing Felix talking to you guys right now because when I was watching the footage back and editing it, I realized that the audio for the whole review portion of the drum kit is like completely distorted and weird sounding. There's this like crackling noise. So I'm just redoing it for you right now. So basically this portion of the video is my little review. I'll put a timestamp in here so you guys can skip ahead to the tutorial part where I show you guys how to work it. But this right here is the review. So basically my first impressions with the drum kit is that the box was very heavy because there is a lot of components. I know you guys can't see the whole thing right now, but basically there is three toms, a snare, a kick drum, a hi-hat control pedal, and a hi-hat obviously. So this is basically three different sounds in one. It's this, and then it's this, and then it's this, which is you know the way a normal hi-hat would work. Um, and then there's also two crashes, and then a ride. And it's all super good quality, very, very well made. Nothing is really too cheap feeling about this. It's all pretty sturdy, pretty strong. A couple things to definitely keep in mind though is number one, the like placement of the cords and the outlets and cables and stuff inside of your room or your setup or whatever. So the thing that I first ran into, the first problem that I had was the cord not being long enough. So it comes with this like a nine volt adapter cord. I know you guys can't really see it very well, but the nine volt adapter plugs into this little brain module right here. Um, I also forgot to mention that there is like a little brain thing where you have controls and you can control what drum kits you're using and stuff. But yeah, the 9 volt adapter plugs into this and then it also plugs into an outlet into the wall or wherever. But mine, however, did not reach all the way. So what I had to do was I had to buy a surge protector and then the surge protector, I plugged an extension cord into that, ran the extension cord behind me to the floor over here so that it could be close to the drum kit so that it could plug in properly and not have the cord be like, you know, like this across the room. So right now it's just, you know, flat on the floor. So yeah, that's one thing is like where you're gonna plug it in and then also how you're gonna plug it into your computer. So the proximity of the drum kit to your computer is pretty important. With my setup personally, that's probably the one thing that I would improve, but my room just kind of doesn't really allow for it to be you know, close to my computer. So my computer's over there and my drum kit's over here. So if you're like me and in your case, your drum kit is kind of far away from your computer, you're going to need cables that reach that far. So for me, I actually had to get a really long MIDI cable. I had to get a 10 foot MIDI cable and it's actually still probably not long enough. I probably still should get another longer one. So yeah, I would get maybe like a 15, 20 foot MIDI cable. So yeah, that's really the only thing that I had to get extra because I already had a guitar cable, um, like a guitar amp cable. And I believe it's called like a one fourth inch, you know, cable or whatever. So you're gonna need one of those if you want to plug it into your interface and stuff, which is one of the two ways that we're gonna record it. The two ways are through MIDI and through that one fourth inch cable. So a couple different cool features with the actual drum kit. The sensitivity of the pads is really nice. So if I want to do stuff like this, you can do very light, you know, buzz rolls and stuff on the snare or on any other drum that you want to, which is pretty nice. Um, also, another thing that I really love is you can swap the drum kit sounds. So it literally comes with 16 different drum kits. One feature that I also love is that you can do this. 
and then grab the symbol to silence it, which is like the coolest thing ever to me. Also, what you can do is you can hit the side of the snare or like the rim kind of area of the snare and it'll make a different sound than if you hit the snare. Um, and I believe this works with every single other, you know, all the toms and stuff too. But yeah, then also you can do, you know, stuff like this with the hi-hat, which I think is super awesome as well. And that's all kind of stuff that you'd be able to do with a real drum kit, an acoustic drum kit. So yeah, the drums are mesh heads, which is better than rubber heads. I think they actually have a cheaper version of this drum kit that has rubber heads, but the mesh heads give you more of like a real kind of feel. And you can really get that kind of like rebound that you want. But yeah, this thing is really awesome. I love messing around with it. And it's really, really good for getting your rhythm down and all that kind of stuff too. A lot of people say that they, you know, when they started playing drums, they became a better, you know, piano player, guitar player, bass player, whatever it is, you know, drums kind of just helps you build that rhythm that you need for literally any other type of instrument, which is super, super awesome and super helpful. Another thing that I would say about this is that it was pretty difficult to build. I wouldn't really say difficult, but it's just a little bit frustrating and it took kind of a while. It probably took like an hour and a half, maybe two hours to build the whole thing but yeah this thing is super awesome it's a great you know practice tool for drummers and it's also a great great production tool for producers and stuff like that as well so yeah basically now i think i'm going to show you guys how to actually record inside of fl studio and the first way is with the one fourth inch cable you know guitar cable through your interface so yeah basically what you do is you just plug the one end of this thing into here and you know just take this and plug it in down here and then you take the other end of your cable and plug it into your interface and then you go over to your fl studio and then inside fl studio you go to whichever mixture track doesn't really matter uh, i usually do insert one and then i go up here to where it says none and then i choose whichever one my plug my cable is plugged into so for me it's insert two because i have a guitar plugged into insert one but yeah so just click on that and just make sure you click on mono and not stereo because stereo will make it into only one ear and that's really weird and annoying and that's a problem i had when i first started recording things in fl and then once you have that your drum kit should be connected so if you hit one of these drums, it should make a noise. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. The first way is the same way that I showed you guys how to record guitar, which is basically just going into the playlist and then hitting this thing and then doing um, record audio into the playlist as an audio clip. And that'll just record whatever you play on here and put it inside there. But that video is a little bit outdated and the way that I record everything now is kind of like this. I go to whichever mixer track I have my thing plugged into, which is really important by the way, you have to do that. Or you can actually go to the master track if you want to. But then I just click any slot and then I go to Edison. Now that you have your Edison, basically what you can do is you can hit record and now it will record whatever you play inside here. As you can see on the screen, it's recording that. So now that you have this and it's just kind of recording, uh, if you have other like things that you wanna add drums on top of, so let's say you have a piano melody or something that you've already created and you wanna record over that, basically you can just go into the playlist and click in the piano melody. Let's just pretend this is the piano. And then make sure song is selected right here and then just hit play. And then it'll just keep looping this over and over so you can listen to it and record at the same time. But mind you, you'll have to have your headphones on. So that's another thing that's important is being in close enough proximity to your computer to where you can wear your headphones and whatnot as well but yeah for me I don't have anything that I want to record over I'm just gonna record drums and then put instruments on top of them basically I'm just gonna go into the Edison and then I'm just gonna do new right here and then I'm just gonna hit record and now I'm gonna hit record and now I'm just gonna go over here and then record what I need to record make sure it sounds good and everything and then I'll come back to the computer and you know stop recording so basically we're gonna do that right now So once you've recorded what you want to record, you can go into Edison, click the stop button, and then you can click and drag on this red portion, and this will select, you know, which section you want, and you can drag it to, you know, wherever the start is, and then wherever the end is, and then just click this right here, and this will drag it into your playlist, like that. So essentially, that is all you need to do to record through audio. You just, you know, do exactly those steps, drag it in, and it's really fairly easy. The hard part is really just, you know, playing the drums correctly. Well, at least for me, because I'm not, you know, a professional drummer or anything. But yeah, so basically, now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to record through MIDI and the ending of the cable should look like this. It shouldn't be any other, you know, variety of MIDI cable. It should look like this one because that's the port that this thing has. So once you plug the one end of your MIDI cable into your drum kit and then the other end in your computer, you can go here to options and then go to MIDI settings. And then as you can see right here, mine says USB MIDI, which is probably what yours will say as well because I didn't see in the, you know, 
controller type things, any uh, actual like drum kit, electronic drum kits or anything. So yeah, basically it'll just say USB MIDI and then you have to enable it. So it might be like this, just click enable and then it should be on generic controller, that'll be fine. And then you can just um, X out of this once you have that set up. And now what you gotta do is load up FPC, which you should have if you have you know any version of FL Studio. I'm pretty sure it comes with the software. So just go into your channel rack, go to the plus sign and then go to FPC. And now this should load up this program that looks like it's some sort of MIDI controller or something. And this surprisingly, very surprisingly to me actually, is perfectly linked with the drum kit. So if I go in here and hit the snare, it hits the snare in FPC as well, which is pretty impressive. And I was actually really surprised by this because when you use a MIDI controller, like a drum pad or anything, it actually is completely off, like all of the different, you know, pads and everything, you have to reroute them. But for this, you don't have to do any rerouting. It should be perfectly fine. I am updated to FL 20.8 uh, or whatever it is. So maybe that has some sort of effect on it. Maybe yours might be different, but if yours is different for whatever reason, what you can do is you can go right here, click this little drop down, and then go to map notes for entire bank. And basically what that'll do is just like whichever thing that you click on it'll link to inside of here So starting from the bottom left, I'm pretty sure uh, Then going to the right and then going up like this kind of way Just make sure that you hit the right, you know pad which corresponds with the right sound inside of FPC And then you should be fine, but you might be thinking to yourself Well, I don't really want to use these preset drum kits that are in FPC. Well good news for you pal Good news for you bucko So what you can do is you can go in here and you can you know select these different sounds and let's say I want to change the snare right I can change the snare to something else so we can click on this little file icon right here and then we can go to all wherever all my drum sounds are so in music drum kits and stuff let's do this one so now this, whenever I hit the snare, is going to trigger that clap. So yeah, if you want to change the sounds in any type of way, you can do that. However, one thing you might need to do is if you're, you know, going to make this a clap sound, there's different layers within here. So as you can see, there's this one, two, three, four. So if for any reason you're still getting like a snare sound out of that a little bit while also getting the clap sound, you can um, delete some of these layers. So just delete that or whatever, um, go into the four, delete that. You know, just kind of play around with it and delete whichever ones that you don't need, whichever ones that you don't want that are still making noise but anyways the kit that I'm gonna use to demonstrate the recording MIDI process is this HQ funk kit and basically I'm going to just load this up and now what you can do is you can go in here uh, to piano roll and now it'll show you all of these different things here and then basically you can just hit record and notes and automation and then once you hit the space bar it'll start recording and this might be a little bit tricky if your drum kit is not right next to you because you'll have to press the space bar and then like run over there but I'm just gonna play what I need to play and then I'll adjust it later on so yeah basically I'm gonna do that now all right so I cheated a little bit because I recorded the hi-hats and I recorded the kick and snare separately but once I get a little bit better at drums I'll probably be able to do that all at once but yeah for now this is how it is but the nice thing about recording MIDI is that you can adjust and you know make changes changes as need be. So that's what I did. I kind of recorded stuff and then I, you know, added certain things in or, you know, adjusted the volumes of certain things so it sounded better. One complaint that I have, however, is that if you hit a drum or pad or whatever, it'll just hold that note for the entirety that you're recording, which is kind of annoying, but you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. So yeah, basically as far as the MIDI pattern goes, this is what we have so far. Basically what I'm gonna do from here is I'm just gonna add some more instruments and probably just make a beat out of this. Probably make a beat out of this one and out of the thing that I recorded. I'll probably use the recorded section as like a drum break or something like that. But yeah, for the most part, this is honestly gonna do it for the tutorial on how to use your electronic drum kit inside of FL Studio. Hopefully this was able to help you. Hopefully there was no you know hiccups or problems or anything. And if there was, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. So yeah, let me know what's going on. Hopefully I'll be able to help you guys out. And now I'm actually going to finish up this beat here.
Anyways, that's going to pretty much do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you were able to gain a little bit of knowledge on how to use an electronic drum kit inside FL Studio. So yeah, make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below, along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beat store, my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out. Also, a big shout out to Donner. Go cop the drum kit if you want to, or you know, go check out their website, see what other stuff they have to offer. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. But yeah, I still love them, like we said blood No, I gotta keep going, I can't give up Lately I've been feeling lost, I've been feeling stuck But maybe